I don't know why I'm always saddled with these uh, sort of positions. <laughs> I, I, I think this this particular argument is really quite silly. And, and the best argument that the state can make, and I, I don't agree with it, uh, it, is basically, look, there's no law that specifically says that transgenders are not allowed to participate in female sports. Uh, therefore, we, the state, are allowed to impose our restrictions as we see fit. Uh, I guess they could also argue that the religious uh, aff affirmation that Amir spoke about um, is one that is not really contemplated somehow by the First Amendment. I would disagree with that. I think it is. Uh, so that's the, really the only argument that they have. The other arguments that you have to scour through the internet, uh, through the ACLU position, for example, is that somehow there is no distinction between male and female in reality. It's all just in our minds, and therefore it's perfectly appropriate to pursue this. And uh, Title IX also requires that women be allowed to participate in sports and by not allowing transgender students who identify as a woman uh, to participate somehow, uh, then you're violating Title IX. I don't see it. I don't believe that. I think it's garbage. But nevertheless, that's the argument that they would make. Yeah, Amir, whenever these arguments come up, and they do come up a lot, right, transgender athletes in women's sports, it's almost exclusively a right. biological male pretending to be a woman going into women's sports. The argument is we're not banning transgenders from playing in high school athletics or middle school athletics. You're just asking that these individuals play alongside their biological sex. Isn't that the heart of the issue here? Well, yeah, that, that is, you know, what's interesting is that this particular school, their state um, has there's a few different things. First of all, just as a background, it's not just athletics. You know, many of these school districts in, in Vermont and in Maine, uh, they're very rural and they don't have public schools. And so what they use state money as sort of a voucher to allow students who live in these rural areas to attend independent schools, private schools, and they can attend religious schools. So if you are now picking these schools out of participating in that program, you're stopping these students from participating uh, and getting the state money, which is uh, essentially uh, denying them their education. And so they're being denied as well, participating in academic programs, uh, debate team, science fairs, math fairs, that sort of thing. So it's not just athletics, but but also to your point, uh, this, this particular school has a policy that says that boys, it says it's the boys girls fairness policy. It says boys are prohibited from playing on a team of girls and vice versa. But it also then has this, uh, this gender identity policy that says if you identify uh, as the opposite sex, you can't be discriminated against. And so the, internally they have attention and they have to sort of resolve that on their own. Uh, but they're punishing this school from not only exercising its religious liberties, but really just adhering to the policies that this district applied uh, with respect to sports team for since, you know, time immemorial.